Hey, how are you? Hang on a second, I'm just digging out my reference that I need. <coughs> and then I will be getting started. Sorry about my disorganisation. Right, there we go. Okay, so... Sorry, I had it up and then it was gone. You know what it's like. Um, we're going to continue on our superstructure, okay? We've made a lot of progress, but we need to do quite a bit more. So... What I'm going to do is grab everything at the moment that makes this part here. Just isolate it. Okay, so that way we've got literally just this part here, yeah? And as you can see, it's coming along. It's thunderously complex, as we all know, but it is getting there. Okay, so if I go over here to this one and press F4, and what I'm going to need to do is... If you remember, I was only working on half the model for reasons of logic and not want to like make my brain explode. So collapse it because it's currently got a smooth applied to it. And I am going to get this polygon here, and I am going to inset it just a teeny bit. How's that much? I need to do a lot. Just that these ends here basically become like block separators, you know. Now I'm going to extrude it. And then with this here, I'm going to basically start messing around with the shape a bit, you know. Now then, what I need to do here is just rotate it. And all I've done is rotated it 90 degrees, so we're going to get roughly a shape that I want. Now, obviously this is too pinched at the moment. And if I go to my top viewport here, I also want to get rid of that lot. Okay, that way it's not going to be in my way. I can put it back in again using symmetry at any time, so... Because we know it fits and works. Okay, now I'm going to grab these and move them closer being a kind of a halfway point which is about there then what I can do is just start to swift loop the shape a bit now as you can see it's not especially sh it's not kind of straight is it but that's okay we can work with it <coughs> so I'm just coming in from the side here There we go, I'm just adjusting it. And I'm just using E in this case, which is my rotate hotkey, obviously. E, letter E. And that will allow me to basically just make some modifications as I go along. I'm going to swift loop here. Go back to my rotate key again. There we go, like that. And then if I grab that, I can just use chamfer and pull out this edge here a little bit. Okay, that's not bad. Now I can also do it to smooth this if I just double click. There we go. Now, I didn't loop the entire lot, so let's try it again. That's better. Alright, so we're getting a bit of a smooth over going there. Now, up here, I'm going to say that this is a bit too wide, so I'm going to bring this down. There we go. And then, through here, I can just swift loop. And then just move it just a teeny bit. Not too much, just a little bit, just to round it, you see. And I'm probably going to do the same again just here. And again, use your artist's eye, you know. Think of them as your own personal happy little clouds and you will be fine. Okay, so that's came in about fine there. Now, I'm going to... Bring this down to the point just over the chop of, chop, top of the shoulder, which is about there. Okay, because this is as good a point as any. Lo 
lovely. Now if we go into perspective, I'll just have a look at this. I can see that it could do with fattening up in a few places to be honest. So I think what I'm gonna do is use my again, my little uh artist side thing that I keep talking about. But just start it here. Because remember the structure is supposed to be good and solid. That's the shape we're going for. And you can't just grab them all and hope for the best. I mean you could apply, you know, an extrude perhaps and prepare it from there, but I don't see the point. We've got time. You've watched, you know, oh, it must be nearly twenty hours of this if you're this far in. So you know a few more hours isn't gonna kill you. Grab yourself a nice cup of tea and just relax and enjoy some modelling. As my beloved wife calls it, moggling. Which I always think is hysterical. Okay, let's see. We've got a few areas that are slightly too thick in my opinion, so take your time. As I've said before, it's not a race. doing some very minor changes to this. Remember, again as Bob Ross said, this is your world. Do you want to have them thicker? You have them thicker. There we go. Beautiful. Okay. Now, from here then. I'm going to need to come down the middle to the top and then spread down to there. So... What I'm going to do here, go by polygon, just let auto save do its thing, because it will anyway. And I'm going to grab here and here, do an inset, and then I'm going to drag this to round about there. Again, I'm doing this by eye. If you're not sure, just go into your top viewport. <laughs> you know what? That was pretty much exactly what I wanted, so I'm pleased about that. Now, then, I'm going to have to probably squash this down a little bit. Get here. Again, I'm going to hinge from edge. I'm going to pick my hinge. It's going to be this one. 90 degrees, so it'll be slightly over as you can see. And I'm going to put two segments in. Click OK. And if I just grab those ones and those ones, OK, and I'll just start to bring it down a bit. Then I'm going to hold Alt just to deselect that one. I can start changing the angles of the parts that I'm using. As you can see at the moment, the angles are a little bit off. So, thankfully, because we're working in you know pretty much 90 degree angles a lot of the time, we don't need to worry too much. All right. Now what I'm going to do is go back here and just double click that edge, and that'll let me chamfer. That'll give us this lovely smooth piece coming over here like that. Now then I'm going to want to just adjust these just a teeny bit actually. Because I want the angle a little bit sharper. Like that. And then I can make the angle a little bit less. It's a bit better like that. Now, if I just zoom in on this, one of the things is this angle here has still got too much of a slow kind of shape to it. So let's just grab these, start moving them in a little bit like this. 
this will increase the angle just a teeny bit. It'll make it look like a much tighter shape as well. Just try and even them out as best you can by eye, okay? Take your time. If you're finding this difficult, just have a little break. Come back to it. No point rushing. That's my opinion. People rush too much, you know? Just mess around with the shape until you think you've got it the way you want it. When you think you've got it the way you want it, you probably have. There we go. I'm going to bring this one down. It goes there. Remember what I said before about having my anti-aliasing turned off? It's a cheap trick, but you know what? Works for me. If it works for me and it works for you, then use it. No one's going to tell you off for using something that works. Okay, now over here, where our polygon is, I'm going to just use my bevel tool and bring that out by zero. You can tell that I have because the lines overlap. Just bring that out. There we go. And now that part and that part have overlapped each other. And we've got a shape that's working for me, so I'm really pleased about that. Scratch my ear because it's teeny bit itchy. Remember, the whole point is to give this thing a kind of a really strong looking structure for the torso rather than just going for the whole kind of here's a brick, put a slot in it, it's a robot kind of shape. Okay, and that's working pretty nicely, I think. So I'm going to have a look down here now at these shapes. I think what I'm going to do is probably draw this across just using just, click that, just using um, the symmetry tool. So I'll just bring that out. Reason being now that I've got this polygon visible to me. Which is what I needed. Now if I go to my symmetry tool, just holding down S until I get the symmetry. And it's on the z-axis. Now I can st I can um, just drop back down to editable poly and show end result. This way I can start seeing exactly how my model's coming along. Okay, so I'm going to get my polygons just here and here. I've said that a few times. I never like the colour it turns to when it does this. I know it's kind of trying to remind me, hey buddy, I'm still in symmetry mode, and that's cool, but I don't really need to know that badly. Okay, now I'm just going to bring these together. Remember the first time I used the symmetry tool, it literally blew my mind. It was like, this does what? Look at that, that was amazing. It's still a pretty darn impressive tool to be honest as well. Right, let's look at some of these shapes here. And I think I'm going to have to continue this one down. Okay, so just had a quick pause while I looked at uh, exactly what I was doing because I need to obviously look at my model. Now I need to unhide all or end isolate or whatever I want to call it. And I'm going to grab these bits again. There was a bit I didn't have, and that's that bit. Okay, now isolate selection. So I need this nice bottom piece in here too. Right, now. Using these I can start charting out the next piece of my model. So, I'm just going to go back to my original reference image. I've got my other screen. Remember if you don't have two screens, the best thing to do is to print out your references by the way. Okay, so just a little bit of advice there. If you need them, it's a very good idea to print them out. Now, I don't need to work on those bits, so... I think it's going to be on these bits here. I'll just remove symmetry again. Saves me having to get annoyed by the bright and horrible colours that I'm continually getting. 
and this bit what I'm going to do is shave off the end just there and then cap it and then go to polygon mode so this is one thing we've learned we need to stick with our style and the good thing is that these little boxes here will allow us to drive a lot of rivets onto them so that will be a help too ok so that comes into there lovely little shape Next, I'm going to grab here, and I'm going to do another zero length bevel. Bring it in like that. Not very far, just a little bit. I'm going to copy it. So that's my original one, the hinge from edge. I'm going to pick my hinge. selected and just change the number of turns I've got in this like so and this will allow me to get some interesting little shapes going give it a bottom piece okay now I'm going to bring this back a little bit because it's coming out a bit too far I think a couple of ways I can do this I think what I'll do is I'll just basically squash it. Now if I'm doing this I need to make sure that this curve is maintained here like so and I'm going to bring this back a bit as well. There we are. Okay so that's reduced the amount that one's sticking out by. That's good. So next, I'm going to bring this straight up. So again, if I just grab this and just extrude it. Okay, so you can see this is coming over now. And I think this should probably be in a little bit more. So I think I'll undo that and over here where this is what I'm going to do is just grow it remember there's a lot of farting around with this just going to cap here wait for auto save let's try to be health there we go, cap not bridge, silly me and bevel there we go and then over here now we can bring this in a bit like so I don't want to bring it in too far. I'm going to get this and this. And another zero length bevel. Okay. F E port and zoom. Rotate it, 90 degrees, and I'm going to put it more or less in the right position, so kind of just above here, like that. Now if I swift loop, just get this to about there and mess with the depth there we go 
I get this width more or less correct. Once I've got that in, I can start adding more curves to it. Remember we did this before. Of course, the problem with this is, remember, we have to adjust these parts. So, let's get them kind of straightened out. And ordinarily, I'd remove this. However, as you can see, it kind of goes quite a long way, so it's probably best not to. Okay. So, if I just first of all pinch these two together a little bit. One there. Remember, I'm using marquee because I want the verts behind as well. They're very important. Now I can straighten up these, just make them into a nice straight edge. Try and keep the integrity of the middle loop where I can. That one's just about right anyway. And this one. Okay, perspective and zoom. Let's have a look at this shape. That's not bad, the angles are loop. Probably could do with a little bit of changing. There, that's better. It's a much better angle, in fact. The only thing I'm going to need to do here is change the sloping on this one, which I shall bring down like so. Make sure I've got both of them. There we go. Yeah, that's an excellent one. one fits a lot better. Okay, and the trick is that I'm going to have this one come down and basically sink around this piece. So, the easiest way to do that is I'll bring this straight down so that it encompasses this. I can then mess around with the width of the shape and so on until it's exactly what it is I need, so... I do enjoy messing around with a nice model shape, to be honest. There. Like this one. There. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is swift loop. Just to here. The reason I'm doing that is because now I can grow this, and delete it, and then recap it on the border. And I'll be able to create the same shape that we've been using for a while now, so I'll just use a bevel tool. My zero length bevel. Straight down. Stop. Right. And here, where this one is, have it come out like that, but not too far. That way it's overlapped and we've got a nice strong looking structure going on here. Okay, that works nicely. Now, I've been meaning to put an inside on this so I'm going to just use bevel freehand if you're not too good at using a freehand bevel then just what you could do is create a sphere with the correct number of segments and just turn it inside out and stick it on here I'm just using this as a simple kind of thing just in case there's ever a point where I don't have any weapons or anything on it and then I can make it look like it's got weapons at the moment. I mean make it look like it's got an internal structure for its arm right Okay, that's looking not bad so far. Got some good shapes going on. And let's have a look at this. A 
Nice shape that one. I if there's anywhere I can reuse it. It would be nice too. Let's have a look. I'm going to put that on there. Bring it across a little bit. I'm just going to see if I can reuse this nice shape. Like I said, I do enjoy reusing shapes wherever possible. Let's sink that in. Um, let's have a look at these. I think it's probably going to be a bit of a pain to try and reuse that one. I wonder if I can change the angle a bit. It's one of those phases where I'm kind of having a bit of an experiment. In my view, that's kind of what art should be about anyway. Should be trying to come up with something that's going to work for you, you know. Uh, I reckon that will go into there. Bit of an overlap, but it'll work. So if I change the angle again for another 10 degrees, or 5 degrees or whatever, I can probably make it fit on this one. There we go. I'm just going to mount it to there. See where that is? Lovely. Alright. Like that. Now. I've got a feeling I should be able to bring this across and down a little bit. So I'm just going to grab the top parts of this and bring this down as well. Okay. Let's see if I can refine the shape a little bit to make it a bit lower. There we are. That fits. Such a nice shape, it seemed a shame to waste it and not use it again, you see. And rather than copying that, I think I'll just extrude it a little bit. And then see if I can get this to basically line up over here with this. So I'm going to get my left viewport zoomed just so I can see the end of it. Hit F3. As you see, we can line this up, so that's a help. I'm going to line it up to just there, like that. And then, if I put in a swift loop, I'll just pull that out. And then put another swift loop in here. This is only probably going to be about a 30 to 35 minute piece. I've got a bit of a bad stomach today, not that you need to know that, but you know. Transparency, man, it's important. Okay, so you can see where this is going. And I think what I'm going to try here put a nice sharp angle on this, so inch and edge I think I'll probably need to make it exactly 90 degrees I just made it 900 degrees, that's silly of me there, 90 Okay, and might not fit together exactly, but it's worth having a look. Okay, let's save, do its business again. Save, 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 grow. And deselect these ones. Okay, and now I should be able to move these 
pretty much into the right place that I need, which is there. I'm going to get this. Uh, and that. There we go. And what I need to do is bring that down to roughly the size I need. So I'll just use the scale tool for the moment. And then now, if I get this part here. Let's do a quick ring. Delete. And get rid of these bits too. And this inside your part that I'm no longer using. In order to make this fit into this part, not to get rid of this middle edge, thankfully, I can on this one. So control and backspace with it selected and it's gone. And bridged. There we go. So that makes it into one nice solid unit just there. And that's fitted in quite nicely. Okay, now I'm going to stick symmetry on just to see how it's looking. And make sure it's on the correct symmetry path. There we go, you see that's a much more exciting and of course complex shape, I think you'll agree. Okay, and uh, aside from a little bit more work to do, we'll be ready to detail it soon. Okay, so as I said, not a particularly long box. I need to go and get a bit of fresh air. But uh, in the next part, ooh, dear me, more of the same. Woohoo! So until then, I'll catch you in a bit. Bye bye for now.